Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. I've got a good one for you today. We're off of Crest Street in the Laguna, someplace different for us to traverse down. Just a beautiful spot above the street, the cliff, someplace different to take a look at. There's so much to talk about right now in the economy. And, uh, you know, I believe this as well, that a recession would be an improvement right now from where we're at. That being said, there's just so much to cover, so many different reactions from subscribers and uh, so many things that are happening in the news. Uh, we've also got a sponsor today, Noom. Noom is our sponsor for today's video, and I'll talk about them a little bit later. Please do not forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Share this with everybody, and uh, let's get into it. Uh, you know, I get people that write me all the time, and they constantly tell me, you know, Dan, we really want to get in the real estate market. Uh, we really want to, you know, make more money. I'm getting a little bit of everything right now. Here's the thing, guys. The problem with a downturn is that everybody wants to move forward. Everybody wants to move forward in a big way. It's not what you need to do all the time. You just need to, to cautiously improve your life right now. And I'm gonna give you an example. David wrote me out of the UK talking about how depressed he is with uh, the prices of UK real estate because they're seeing the exact thing there, same thing there that we're seeing here. And you guys have to understand that this cannot continue forever, okay? Real estate is gonna ebb and flow. They're building in the UK, just like they're building here. People are overbidding for properties, just like they are here. But the problem with this is that this cannot continue forever. The higher interest rates are coming. The two-year, 10-year bonds are, are shooting up right now, guys. The European bank just issued a warning that they're concerned about the debt market. You guys, first of all, let me show you something. This is out of a movie, guys. This is like, from here to eternity, just beautiful seascape, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable, unlike anything you guys have ever seen before, you know? Just really, really stunning. And look at this. But you have to do this. Save your money and wait. I'm telling you this right now. Scarlett Johansson bought her condo, we covered this in the last video, at the top of the market for $2.1 million. Now, think about it. In the last 12 years, uh, I'm sorry, 14 years, okay, she's gained so much more cachet with her career that it's Scarlett frickin' Johansson. Now, how come her condo's not selling for you know $5 million because it's hers? Because it doesn't support it in the marketplace. Now. When you think about Mark Wahlberg and he buys a house in 2009 for $8 million and today that $8 million place is being sold for $87 million, maybe it's because it's Mark Wahlberg's, okay? There's that. Maybe it's got that cachet. But in 10 or 12 years, is that place going to be worth $800 million? No, it's not going to go 10 times. You have to look at things in a realistic manner, especially when it comes to real estate, because like I said yesterday, I've seen properties, and it's funny, I had my lawyer on the phone about something else, and I said, hey, I'm thinking about filming this house I looked at in uh, 2009, 2010, and it had uh, you know $1.3 million of the loans to it, and they were selling it for 800 grand, and I wanna go back to the house. And he, are you kidding? The house isn't for sale, and it's not your house, Dan. So he stopped me from doing that. But again, guys, there are houses that went up in the last real estate increase that have never gotten there again. Doesn't that scare you? Oh, this is different this time, Dan. Things are so much better. No, they're not. There's, there's, no, much, there's no different. The fact that in just over a couple of months, interest rates have gone up almost 2% for houses here in the States. We're gonna get our inflation numbers and we're supposed to celebrate this and we know that they're gonna be a lie. They're lying in the UK at how inflation is. They're lying here at how inflation is. So I'll get back to this in just a minute. I want to thank Noom for partnering with me on this video. Noom is a weight loss program. It is a psychology-based uh, 
uh, program and the curriculum is unbelievable. I, I have had tremendous success with this and I'm really excited to talk about it. Uh, when I signed up for this, I was a little skeptical, but needless to say, you answer a few questions and you follow their program. They have different little quizzes. They have different little teaching methods that at first I thought, okay, is this gonna work for me? But it totally works. And not only that, I look forward to it each day and where it's gonna take me. I track all my food, I track my water, and for someone, you know, I walk easily 12 to 20,000 steps a day with shooting these videos. And the one thing that was missing was my nutritional balance on what I put in my body. And Noom helps me with that. Noom helps me with every aspect of this. And since I've signed up for this two weeks ago, I've lost almost 10 pounds doing this. And again, I wouldn't have done this without, without Noom's help. I love Noom, I think it's a great program. I'm really looking forward to it for the long term. I hope you guys will check it out. Uh, take a look at Noom. It is, uh, use the I allegedly link, the link is below. But this is a program that can definitely benefit you. You get a free trial when you sign up and uh, you answer a few quick questions and they'll see if the program's good for you or not. But again, for me, you know, there's no, there's no one way to lose weight. It's not one size fits all. Everybody needs to do this differently, but I needed help with nutrition. I needed help with walking into a room with food and just shoveling it down my mouth. And uh, I needed a program and Noom was very successful for me. And I think it will be for you guys too. But again, take a look at it. I love it because it's just not fitness based. It's not running. You know, I walk a lot guys, but I still needed to lose a few pounds and it totally worked for me. Take a look at uh, Noom, look at the link below, and I hope you guys will sign up today. I wanna talk a little more about some of the emails I've been receiving lately and how people are really discouraged with everything. And uh, you can't let yourself get down right now. I know it's very difficult and easy for me to say, but man, I have been there. I have been so broke, I've had to live with somebody else, and the advice that I was given is the advice I'm going to give you, and that is that everybody wants to hit a home run, and they want something that's going to be a light switch, that's going to you know, turn everything around with one hit of the bat, and that's not how it is right now. What you guys have to do is you have to move everything forward as, as consistently as possible. If you're working, which this one person wrote me and told me that they're making a lot more money today than they were just a couple years ago, and it's not enough money to rent a place. Now, please understand, I've been there, totally understand, but you have to not use this time to waste any money and to save and to move forward. Now, here's the thing that I believe, and that is you've got to constantly be looking for the bigger, better deal, the more consistent deal, real pay, real company, whether you're working for a real company or not right now, but a permanent position that would pay you a lot more money. Now. One thing that's always been presented to me in my company is the different job fairs. Today, uh, there's a job fair through the Wall Street Journal. The link is below, but whether you see this video now or two weeks from now, the point is, is that keep an eye out for things like these. Keep an eye out for uh, better positions constantly. And it's not a betrayal of your people that you're working for right now. It's that you've got to do what's right for your family and what's right for you. And here's the thing, people sit there and they get so exhausted by the end of the day that they don't have the energy to go look. Looking for a better opportunity is a job to you. It's just as important as the work you're doing to get paid right now, to stay out of debt, and to not be sleeping in your car. As crazy as that seems. Now, here in California, you know, you got a beach resort, you got people out here spending money in the sun, okay? Not everybody can do that, okay? But here's the thing, set the goals one at a time and keep moving forward. Try not to waste any money that you can, save as much money as you can. The problem with growing food and the problem with people wanting to have gardens, I had someone send me the greatest article about how much land does it take to be self-sufficient. And I thought, oh, this is cool. I, I'm really gonna look into this because one thing I did, uh, when I was married and the kids were young, every year we had the garden and we would grow everything, but the rule that we had, we can grow funky stuff, we can grow potatoes, we can grow artichoke, we can grow anything you want, year after year we'd change and do something different, in addition to the regular cucumbers and zucchinis and tomatoes and all that fun stuff. But everything got eaten, guys, everything did. 
You know, I learned how to can things during that time. And the kids, I hate tomatoes, but they'll eat tomato sauce, okay? So we'd grow different tomatoes to make it so that that was possible. And guys, I had an area that was less than 300 square feet, okay? And grew so much stuff throughout the year, corn and, and different things. We had an avocado tree in the backyard, we had different fruit trees, different things that made it so that we could live on all these, this produce that we had. This article that was sent to me is very cool. How, how much uh, land do you need to be self-sufficient? It said four to five acres. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy because it doesn't take four to five acres. I'm telling you, you wanna get into a hot business right now? The weed business was supposed to be the thing that was gonna revolutionize California and all these small towns were gonna turn it around. The hydroponic growing is what did it. I'm telling you this right now, these people that have sense, they're gonna go out and they're gonna sell hydroponic uh, growing apparatuses for vegetables to grow inside people's houses, to grow inside warehouses. You're gonna hear about uh, industrial farming like you've never heard over the last 18 months. Now think about this. My medical conferences, when they legalized marijuana, you know, I would treat these startups that would come in like any other biotech or medical or med tech startup where they'd have to answer certain questions. And, and I hate Dr. Ponytail. I hate the guy that got suspended and he's no longer practicing, but now he's the weed expert, okay? Found him to be an imbecile, okay? Over and over and over again. Wow, you're really cruel to these guys. No, I'm not. I would do the same thing. If some guy walked and said, which I've seen, I have a cure for cancer. Okay, lunatic, show me your cure for cancer. Okay? I've seen it all. But the growing and the hydroponic growing, the problem with that industry is so many people came from the illegal side that they still treat it that way. Okay? So food is going to be one of the most valuable commodities next to water, next to gold and silver. It's gonna be water, food, gold and silver, guys. Okay, and your Bitcoin and all the other shenanigans that you guys have, okay? So, this is coming. But again, what can you do to store food? What can you do to save a little bit? What do you own that you don't need? Seriously, seriously, seriously. I just cleaned my garage out, okay? There's so much crap that, oh my God, look at all the speakers I had, look at all the wireless this and that, things from events, lighting, all this other stuff that I had, I'm not using anymore. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it. Sell it all, guys, okay? And you know what it does? It gives me a little extra cash, okay? So, you have to take this stuff seriously, guys. Look at this, just absolutely beautiful out here. As far as the fear of missing out, don't worry about that right now. Good people are always in demand. And the beauty of this is that companies are sick of the kids, they're sick of the, of the Gen Xers, Millennials, whatever they're called, whatever I'm not and they are, lazy, okay? They're sick of that. I have seen medical device companies right before the health crisis started, Dan, we're done with the kids, it's time to bring the adults back and uh, we're gonna start hiring and paying people more money. Get the word out, okay? Then the health crisis hits and everything shuts down so there's no hiring. Well, this is coming back, guys. So good people will pay someone good a good wage. You've got to be strong with that right now because I'm telling you guys, this is, you're, you're going to be the asset of you, the brand of you, the value of you, don't diminish. Work a job that you have to work right now to get by. I've done this. I've worked for people. I've worked for children before that didn't know what the hell they were doing and did my job, paid my bills, fed my children, and moved forward. And you know what? I don't look back at that now. I don't look back at that as a waste of time in my life. It was a learning experience and make everything positive. But at night, evenings, weekends, especially when the kids weren't with me, it was time to move forward and look for a bigger, better deal. The BBD, baby, you gotta look for that constantly, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. The housing market, I'm telling you guys, take a deep breath, okay? Talk to your accountant. Oh, I do my own taxes, Dan. 
Uh, I'm my own financial advisor. Okay, good for you. That's great. Okay. Why do you need to get into a house right now? What is the infatuation with a house right now? Hmm. Okay. The car market is an absolute mess right now. Prices are up one day, they're down one day, there's no inventory, there's inventory. Uh, there's a chip shortage. I think there's a, there's a chip shortage because they're not selling new cars. That's what I think. And I think that these people that were delusional and bought Ford Broncos for forty and $50,000 over the sticker price, you're, a, you're an absolute sap. That's just me, but that's how I feel. So the housing market is even worse because when you look at assets and you look at history and what we have just lived through in the last 10 or 12 years, and nobody wants to admit that this is a problem. They, you got to get a house now. got to get a house now. Okay, the kids are, kids are at that certain age. Okay. Great, guys. Get it now. Strapped with that debt, paying for something. Scarlett Johansson, who has made, is worth hundreds of millions of dollars right now and could sell that condo. She could, she could, she could have just kept her condo because she could afford it. Okay. She's not you and I doesn't need to sell it. We, we need to sell things like that. She doesn't. Okay. So when you hear this and she's out, uh, selling at a loss, because she wants to get rid of the headache right now. The thing wouldn't rent for the $6,500 a month that she was trying to get. But you need to get into a house right now and gosh, it's just so sad. I just, again, it just drives me crazy that we just can't get ourselves into something. Okay, good luck with that, guys. They are building more houses right now over the course of the eight, next 18 months than the demand will take in. You're going to have demand start to decrease and the inventory start to go up. Oh, that's not true, Dan. You know, it's crazy. The supply chain mess that uh, that we just showed you guys last week, take a look at that video again. This is not getting better. Now you can talk about, hey, you know, I had people write me and say, listen, you, got, you showed uh, some fuel tankers out there and you showed just a few boats. It wasn't like it was a few months ago. Guys, this is bad, okay? When you walk into a grocery store or you walk into different places and they don't have a full shelf or my new thing is fronting the shelves, which is basically taking cereal and when, and then you put it just over the front of it where you have three boxes of the same cereal covering the front row because you don't have 40 boxes of cereal anymore. So share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. Do you think that this is just gonna continue and be great? Move forward, guys. You know, oh, you're wrong. It's so great in my area of the country. Great. Remember, guys, it's not going to drop everywhere, but you're going to see prices absolutely skyrocket. The inflation is through the roof, guys. We're never, ever, ever going to go back to this at a normal level. And I, and I believe this. Somebody wrote me and said, I really think that we're going to see gas hit nine or ten bucks a gallon down, and then they're going to drop it down to six, so we're all going to go, whoo. Isn't that great? No, it's not. It's a criminality live, guys. This is this is absolute a thievery festival that these people are doing to us, and they don't have an ounce of respect for us. They don't have any uh, any plan to fix any of this. It's uh, the seat of their pants, or maybe the plan is to do this to us. Okay, I get enough people that write me and tell me that. But share your thoughts and all this stuff. I want to know what you think. And again, the realtors that are out there. The first question they always say, how long have you done this? Oh, I've been a realtor for seven years. Good for you. You haven't seen anything like we saw uh, 14 years ago. Okay? Oh, damn. You know, it's just, it's terrible. The run-up, the sell-off, everything. Okay? You know, again, people that are moving, the one thing I like to tell people, like I told you guys about the waitress that bought the house over the weekend. Hey, did you guys get a chance to go check out the neighborhood? Oh, uh, it wasn't time. Okay? Think about this. What's it like at night? What's it like uh, during the day? Anybody own a boat that's gonna block your driveway? Uh, are the neighbors crazy? Do they have parties on the weekend? Uh, is it just a big weed festival and your kids are gonna be there uh, riding their skateboards up and down the street? I believe in doing this. I believe in going. It's the, the community I live in is, it has an association to it, but they're not that bad, okay? They got parking issues because they're nuts and, uh, uh, you know, there's that, but 
it's where I wanted to live, guys, and for all those reasons, there's no boats, there's no people working on their cars in front of the house, there's none of that shenanigans. And this woman that bought this house, that had to get into it, has no clue what the neighborhood's like. Remember that, okay? And I don't care if you live on in the UK, Spain, or Pluto, go check it out, man. Go check it out in the rain. What's the neighborhood like? Does the place flood? Well, of course not, Dan. How do you know? How do you know that, okay? What are the police like in that neighborhood when you cross from Huntington Beach to Buena Park, okay? I know the answer to that, okay? Share your thoughts, guys. Well, the inflation numbers are in, and guess what? They're a little higher than everybody anticipated. Uh, they thought inflation was gonna come in at 8.4%, which we all know is completely laughable and uh, untrue. So they announced this morning that consumer price index had risen in the last year, 8.5%, which is insanity. You've got staples like Heinz baked beans that has gone up 38% in the last year, canned spaghetti, canned ravioli, uh, things that people buy uh, is up 38%, but your inflation's only at 8.5%. Uh, no one believes this. So again, it's at a 40 year high. They don't wanna get it to a 50 year high. They wanna keep it at 40 year. Uh, one more thing, we had our fundraiser last night. We had a great time. People showed up for uh, the Los Angeles Angels game. Uh, here's some quick video. It even started raining on us too at one point, but uh, everybody had a great time. Had a great turnout for the game. Everybody's having a great time. Got to see a couple home runs already. Yeah, we got, we got our five innings. We got seven innings. Yeah, we got a legit game. Yeah. In life, some people can be motivated and some people can't be motivated. And here's the other thing. We're all motivated by different things. Some are motivated by, you know, the opposite sex. Some are motivated by money. Some are motivated by prestige and by accolades and by just, you know, praise, simple praise could motivate somebody. Now, here's the thing, guys. You gotta live your life as if this stuff is not gonna get to you because in success, when you look at successful people and you read books like uh, Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill, my father had me read that when I was, I think I was a sophomore in high school. And it led me to believe certain things in business and I've had to go back and read it again because there's certain motivating traits that people have. And again, this is not just the billionaire class, guys. There are successful people that you meet in your life that you have, probably friends, family members that have good marriages, that have good jobs, and are just plain happy people, okay? Not the richest people you know, but they just got it all going on, and when they're around people, they're just a joy to be around because that's where they're at. You have to treat your life this way and you've gotta treat your career this way, and you've gotta understand this, that only you can let somebody piss you off. Only you can let somebody insult you. It's, it's, they can say anything they want. Does it bother you? Does it really get to you? Did they strike a nerve? Who cares about these people, okay? You <laughs> wanna do something funny? Read some of the comments on my videos from these people that have nothing, okay? That are miserable souls, okay? Some of them I know, we figured out who certain people are, and it's funny, okay, who these people are. But guys, you know, it's a lot happening, okay, in Dan's life, and I love doing this. I love that, you know, tonight we've got the charity event, and we raised all that money for these good people, and you know, that brings up a point. You know, one thing that I, I, I came up with that was really lucky was, here you've got a charity out of state and not everybody's gonna support it and it's not a national charity, okay? But if you wanted to support the charity, you could buy a ticket and the money goes to the charity. And people wrote me and said, hey, I don't wanna to go to a baseball game. I hate baseball. I'm not gonna do that. And then they would donate the tickets. So we got those tickets donated to the local Boys and Girls Club. How cool is that, guys? You've got children going to a baseball game tonight because of you that may never have had that opportunity ever, okay? So, what a great thing. Can we get a photo, Bob? Come on. 
running up. Where is he? There he is. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I'm telling you this, prior to the health crisis, I would meet a lot of people coming to my events. They were in transition looking for a new job and we would give them a free ticket to the event to meet different executives. But the one thing that I would do is I would give free tickets to the recruiters. And so you'd have the best recruiters in the industry show up, have them do a few minutes on stage on what they specialize in, and these people would get jobs out of that. And again, if you are looking for a job and you are in the electronics industry, don't go to a medical device person to get a job, okay? Look at the recruiters in that. Be on LinkedIn, know who does what, and look at those job fairs because they're out there and you can make yourself, you know, get yourself a better opportunity, but constantly be looking for the better opportunity. David Rubenstein is a billionaire investor who is talking about how inflation's out of control and the Fed is gonna do nothing to write a check for this and raise interest rates properly. Okay, thank you for the confidence building. And again, I love when billionaires talk like this, but they just say, it's not good. Okay, well, what's the solution, rich guy? Now, David, uh, or Larry Summers, who was the uh, uh, Treasury Secretary for Clinton, again, keep finding this guy because he keeps talking about different things that he predicted over the last six months, eight months, that have come completely true. And that's what you have to look at. You have to look at guys like this that do have a proven track record that are saying, hey, prepare yourself for X, Y, and Z because this is coming. So, you guys, food shortages are gonna happen, okay? When you think about grocery store chains, and if you guys know of anybody who works in the grocery store, Okay? And I'm talking management, I'm not talking to the guy that's putting stuff in bags. Ask them questions on what their prep is for uh, you know, shortages right now. Because they have it, they've done these drills and have spoken to other people. And they're planning on these problems right now. So, motivate yourself, have a plan, move things forward because things are gonna get a lot worse. And it's not, oh, Dan, my daily dose of gloom and doom. No, guys, things are great. I'm doing great, okay? You know? The channel's doing great, a lot of cool stuff going live. A lot of cool stuff's happening very soon, okay? But again, guys, have a plan. Don't let people get to you. The whole world will tell you no. That's all, what, that's, that's all they know is no. Oh, you can't do it, You'll, you won't succeed. I've talked to so many people that have gotten advanced degrees, lawyers and engineers and things like that. And the families didn't have money, but they almost discouraged some of these people from moving forward with their lives. And I was like, why? Well, they just didn't want the challenge that we may ask them for money, okay? And again, the people I know don't have student loan debt. They went out, they have these advanced careers, and they're talking about giving $50,000 worth of free student loans to people. Why not a means test? Why not a financial means test for your student loan debt? If you have $150,000 in student loan debt, why isn't there a financial means for you to be responsible to pay this back? Why can't I ask that question? If you want to be a social worker, which is fantastic, and the world needs better social workers, now more than ever, and better teachers, but if you're gonna choose a profession that's not going to pay you enough to cover this bills, it shouldn't be something that we have to pay for. It's just that simple. And, and people are going to flip out when they hear that from me. But again, I know doctors that had $300,000 in student loan debt, but this guy makes 80 grand a month now, okay? So guess what? He can afford to pay his student loans off, okay? Oh, well, not everybody can be a doctor. You're right, not everybody can be a doctor, but I know people that have changed their degrees three and four times. I know one guy that worked for me, nice guy, one class away from passing law school, one class, one class, okay? And when I talked to the law professor, he said it was the simplest class and was like unbelievable that this guy didn't do it. Totally changed careers and added another 90 grand in student loan debt during that time, okay? We should pay for that because this person 
at the 11th hour changed their career path. I'm gonna end this video with these last two stories. And the first one is out of Bank of America. Think about this, hey, oil prices are gonna cap out at $120 a barrel. Well, they're under $100 right now and gas is at $6.50 right now here in California. So where's it going, guys, 10? If it goes up another $20 a barrel, there's that. Marco Kalanovic from JP Morgan, he is their quant guru, which is very cool title if you can get it. He's talking about where stocks are headed right now. And what he says is, I think things have been uh, overbought in March and it's time to take some profits. In other words, it's time to sell, guys. Sell those stocks right now. And again, if you're not actively involved in your portfolio, you're foolish right now. Get the advice of somebody who knows what they're doing and find out where you should be. Because no matter where the stock market's at, guys, there are things that the stock market goes down and you own and it'll go up. So remember that, okay? Also commodities, there's different ETFs for commodities. Talk to a financial advisor because I'm not giving you financial advice. Please don't forget to support uh, the sponsor Noom. I, I, again, I love the program. I'm doing great with it. I'm gonna continue with it. Uh, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Share this with all your friends and colleagues. Don't forget we've got an email list. If you want more access to me, there is the Patreon channel that you can sign up for and you can get more access to me. Onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon.